um, His Excellency the President and the leaders herein and the clergy and the church I plead that we relax a little bit now as we come back to church we want to listen to the word the eternal food that we have I'm going to read the word and it is from 1st Timothy 1st Timothy chapter 2 1st Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 15 from verse 1 to verse 15 that is the whole chapter and it reads I urge then first of all that petitions prayers intercession and thanksgiving be made for all people for kings and all those in authority that we may live Sorry, I was given the wrong part to read. It is 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 15. Sorry again. And it reads, You, you then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. The hard-working farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I'm saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Remember, Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Verse 11. Here, it's a trustworthy saying. If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Verse 14. Keep reminding God's people of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words. It is of no value and only ruins those who listen. Verse 15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, 
and who correctly handles the word of the truth. That is the word of God. We now rise to welcome the Archbishop as he brings the word. In your programs, page three, there is a hymn, Ruot Tingamalo. In English, it's I'm pressing on. We will sing the first verse and the refrain, then the Archbishop will come and bring the word. Areto kam wotho eyo madhe malo da lodutom kalamobi e monor As we stand, let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. You gathered us here as we pay the last respect to our departed brother, as you called him home to mourn but also to celebrate his life. Lord, it is now time that you condole us with your word, the word of life that gives us hope more than all else. So, Lord, speak to our minds and our hearts your word that we may be refreshed. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please let us be seated. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, William Samoy Ruto, Your Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Rigadi Gashagwa, Her Excellency, Mama Rachel Ruto, all protocol served, Mama Eileen, and your family. I take this moment to greet all of us in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Praise the Lord. Amen. Buana Yesu Asifiwe. Amen. A lot has been said. So we need now to be consoled by God's word. Indeed, this moment is a hard moment for Kenya, a moment that befell us without any one of us getting ready for it. But just before I share God's word, allow me to mention the clergy who are here, a few of them. We have the superintendent minister, Reverend Mutahi Simon from Lovington United, where General Ogola and his family worshipped regularly. We also have Reverend Joyce from the same church, and uh, we have uh, the Reverend Amos Ololdapash, Kenya Forestry Service Chaplain. We have uh, Archbishop Emeritus Habakkuk Abogno. We also have uh, Bishop Bernard uh, Lesagi. We have many of our military uh, chaplains led by the principal chaplain, Alfayo Lelei. We have three, two other Anglican bishops, the Bishop of the Diocese of Masena West, who is our host bishop, the Right Reverend John Mark Haung, and we have our neighboring Diocese of Bondo, the Right Reverend Professor David Cordia with us. Again, Mama Eileen, on behalf of the Anglican Church of Kenya and my family, and the fraternity of the Christian family, where you belong, I bring greetings, but also condolences for what happened to you as a family and to us as a nation. For me personally, General Ogola, we became friends when I met him 
in Anyoki Airbase when I became the Archbishop of the Anglican Church and also Bishop in Ordinary to the Kenyan Defense Forces and I tried to visit all our barracks and uh, we became friends. In the hard moment that has been mentioned after the 2022 election, Mama Eileen and General Gola came to me in church and they asked for prayers and only one asked. If you ever meet the President of the Republic, ask him to allow me to give me an ear. And that's all. I don't fear what is going to happen to me, but uh, I only need to be listened by him. I said, because I may not access as quickly as a matter needs, let us go to the one who answers every prayer we make because you are a believer and I am a believer. So we prayed, the three of us. And uh, I left it at that. Before I ever met the president, he was announced the chief uh, of the general, uh, uh, the Kenya Defense Forces. What an answered prayer. We celebrated, we went to the church at DOD to have a thanksgiving service for God here and answer prayers. Today we are celebrating a man who many have said and described honest, capable, professional, and one who relied on God on everything. And that one encounter tells me he did not want to make a move without consulting God and have people to pray with. So we thank God that he is rested a person who knows the Lord and who knows the way. Paul's letter to Timothy, a young man he was mentoring, and we have heard how General Gola has been a mentor to many. He wrote this letter when he was in prison. And uh, he told him he need not to be ashamed as a worker wherever God has put him. And he brought three analogies of dedication to service. One, that of a soldier. And he said, a good soldier of Jesus Christ is one who takes pride in taking commands and doing his work diligently and is not entangled in everyday life or in matters of civilian. And I think that's what Mweshimi uh, Watandi said. Ogola could not entertain raising money for campaigns with him. He was a soldier and a true soldier. The other analogy here is that of an athlete. No athlete who is competing is awarded unless he, do, he does it according to the rules and compete diligently and make to the finish of the race and is awarded the crown of glory when he emerges first. The next analogy here is that of a farmer. That is that who have worked hard and labored who deserves their first fruits when harvest time come. But we have also been reminded that in Christ, yes, we shall die, but because he's raised from the dead, we embark on a journey that God prepare us for eternity. And that's what verse 11 says. The saying is sure. If we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. God is calling us to a life of piousness and virtues and be virtuous in all we do in life. When we read theology for those of us who train to be theologians, one of the critical subjects we have to go through is philosophy. To understand the philosophical mind of man and what human nature holds 
and the capacity that we can be able to connect with the Spirit of God. And I want to quote a few quotes from a philosophy of a man called Zeno. He developed a philosophy called Stoicism because he lived in Athens, a small place called Stoa. Him was a virtuous teacher. He taught virtues. And some of the quotes I'm going to read describe the virtues General Gola had as Paul was asking Timothy to have so that he may never be ashamed as a worker who serves his God. Seno says, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. And the quality of our thoughts as Christians are sharpened by the understanding of the word of God when we read it thoroughly and carefully in faith. That is what the family has been telling us about General Gola, his passion to read the Bible, so that his true happiness and joy will be found at the quality of his thoughts which are governed by the word of God, which inspires and gives us wisdom. The other quote says, Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. What we have heard from the generals and the colleagues of General Gola is he's always a fully prepared man. He's never casual about his work. He's always prepared for every day's work. And therefore, what may be called luck is only preparation meeting opportunity. I loved when I heard the daughter speak, Lona, and the courage the son has. Preparation meets opportunity. People may interpret luck, but that is what it is. He goes on to say, it is not death that a man should fear, but he should fear never beginning to live. So it is not death that we should fear, but we should fear a life that we have never begun to live. And I can attest there are many people who are elderly today who have never begun to live because they became so careless about what they do every day. But to him, he did not fear death. He was prepared for it. He prepared his family for it because he began to live. God's word guided him, empowered him, and enabled him. The other quote, to live a good life, we all have the potential for it if we learn to be indifferent to what makes no difference. General Gola did not pay attention to things that make no difference. He paid attention to everything that makes difference in the lives of people. That's what we heard. He touched the lives of many widows. He was about this community, giving water and building schools. Because he, he learned this virtue, that to live a good life, we all have the potential for it. If we only we learn to be indifferent to what makes no difference. Fellow mourners, we must learn to be indifferent to what does not make a difference in our own lives and in the lives of others. It is not because things are difficult, Zeno says, that we don't dare. It is because we don't dare that things are difficult. Ogola was one who dared. Any leader who dares to move and move the people, things become easier, and ability and success is in the offing. But if we fear to dare, we will never do anything. The last two, as I conclude, he says, a gem cannot be polished without friction nor a man perfected without trials. 
we have to undergo trials of every nature. Pain, sickness, hard moments, hard decisions to make. For us to be polished like there is no gem that can be polished without friction, nor a man perfected without trials. The very last one. The best sight in the world is to see a man struggle against adversity. This describes our gallant soldiers. They are always struggling against any adversity that gives us threat. And Seno says that will be the, the best sight in the world to watch, to see one who can be able to face adversity and conquer it. Today we have lost a hero, a man of God, a man of faith, but a commander who gave commands and we listened. And all those under him listened and were very, very happy. We celebrate his life with pride. That yes, it is doable for one to be given responsibility and discharge his responsibility with courage, with zeal, with anticipation that success is always in front of us. Let us emulate him. Let us learn to trust in God. Let us learn to be obedient to the call of duty. Let us learn to move forward even when things are tough, for that is what makes the joy of this life. The realities of this life are they are all up and downs. Joyous moments, hard moments, moments of tears, but also moments of laughter. Although we are crying today and mourning, but we are also happy that we are mourning a hero who have made it at family life, in the national service, and as a Christian who knew where he was headed. So as I conclude, these words of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, and following describe the journey of today as we take him to his final rest of the remains of the body, but we know his soul is securely fastened in God's hands. Verse 6. This is Paul talking about his eminent end moment. As for me, I am already being poured and my departure has come. I'm, I'm being poured like a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the last day. And not only me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Paul said these words uh, over 2,000 years ago. But these are the very words we can attribute to General Ogola. He has fought the good fight. He has finished the race. He has kept his faith. And the crown of righteousness await him in eternity. May we emulate him in all we do every day, that we too can be people of hope. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We will now invite the family to step forward so that we do the prayers of the family. And I will also uh, conclude with the prayers of Johnny Masses to all of us so that we may move to the next step of these days a celebration of General Gola's life. So to the families, we pray. Just step a little bit forward. Professor Kodia will pray for the family, and I will come to pray for Johnny Masses. Let's all stand and join the family 
in prayers.